Hey everybody, this is a quick video. I'm going to solve a problem in which you are given two charges and need to find the electric field from two unequal charges at some distance between them or around them uh, in one dimension. So let's start. Two point charges lie on the x-axis. A negative 44 microcoulomb charge at x equals 2.0 centimeters and a plus 12 microcoulomb charge at x equals 46.5 centimeters. Find the electric field, magnitude, and direction at a point halfway between the two charges. So I'm going to start with a sketch. I'm going to draw out a just a number line over here. Looks like it's in red. That's just fine. And let's just label where our charges are. I'm going to say right is positive x, left is negative x. This is at 2.0 centimeters. We have a negative 44 microcoulomb charge. So I'm going to label it negative 44 microcoulombs. I'm going to label that Q1. And then we have another charge, a positive charge, at some other position to the right of it. Do that in red. Q2 equals uh, 12 microcoulombs, positive 12. And the position is... 46.5 centimeters. We need to find the electric field at a point halfway between our charges. So that's going to be somewhere in the middle. You can figure out what that is in a minute. Um, so we know that electric field is a vector. And in this case, our, we, have, uh, we have two point charges. Each produce their own electric field. The equation for the electric field from a point charge, E equals K Q over R squared, where uh, big Q is the charge producing the field, and R is the distance from that charge. Um, so in order to solve for the electric field from each charge, we need to find the distance to this midpoint. And we already know the charges. That's really all we need to know. So let's find the distance to this midpoint. Well, we know that this distance from here to here is, well, from 2 to 46 0.5, we just subtract them. Distance is 44.5 centimeters. That means that this distance to the midpoint is just half of that. Half of 44.5 is 22.25 centimeters from either charge, 22.25 centimeters. So we can now find the electric field from either charge. I'm going to start with Q1. Now Q1 is a negative charge. So the electric field from a negative charge, is, charge points toward the charge. I'm going to do that in green. So I know that my E1 is going to point to the left. Let's calculate it. E1 equals K, 9 times 10 to the 9. Or let's do 8.99. 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times Q. Uh, the magnitude of Q is 44 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Over the distance squared, the distance is 22.25 centimeters, so 0 0.2225, that distance squared, to solve for the magnitude of E1. Plugging that into a calculator, we get... We get 7.99 times 10 to the 6, and the units are newtons per coulomb. And we know that the direction is left, so I'm going to add that in, left. Uh, notice I didn't include the negative sign on the charge. That's because this equation is really just going to give me the magnitude. I would take the absolute value anyway. Um, the sign just tells me whether the force is in the direction of the electric field. Uh, okay, so next up, let's find the electric field from Q2. Well, we know that Q2 is positive, so it produces an electric field that points away from positive charge. That means E2 is also going to point to the left at this midpoint. And we know our equation is the same, KQ over R squared. So E2 equals 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the distance is the same, 0 0.2225 meters squared, to get, in the calculator, 
2.18 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, and the direction is also left, as we see up here. Since they're in the same direction, we just add the magnitudes to find the net electric field. We know our net electric field is equal to the vector sum of all of the individual electric fields. So it's just going to be uh, 7.99 times 10 to the 6 plus 2.18 times 10 to the 6 equals 10.2 uh, 10 point or 10.17 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, since they're both pointing to the left, our net electric field is also to the left. That's all. Find the electric fields from each individual charge at a point, and then use vector addition to find the resultant electric field. If our electric fields ended up being in opposite directions, we would have subtracted the magnitudes instead of added them. But you still need to draw the diagram in order to identify the distances and directions of the electric field. That's all. Bye.